Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Game Insider Comp video. Let us discuss the Xbox One. A developer has weighed in once again on, you guessed it, the ESRAM. The developer's name would be Wolfgang Engel, and he is from G Confetti FX. So, these are words that should possibly be listened to because he headed the development of the Rage Engine for, for example, Rockstar titles like Grand Theft Auto 4, Red Dead Redemption, Midnight Club Los Angeles, and so on. And he began by saying ESRAM is very fast memory. In general, the biggest challenge that game developers are facing are memory access patterns. So while we have a lot of computational power, the memory access costs is increasing substantially over the last 10 years compared to the cost of arithmetic instruction. As long as you are in the registers, you are fine, but as soon as you need to access memory, it becomes slower. So the challenge is to access memory in the most efficient way possible. I'll go more into this in just a moment, guys. Therefore, memory access patterns are most important optimization strategies. So it's about counting cycles, but it's also about thinking how we can refactor an algorithm so that we can access memory in a more efficient RAM, a more efficient way. Yes, RAM is part of that. For example, for a compute shader, you can access cache memory, thread group shared memory, so that you can refactor your algorithm so it uses the memory better, resulting in a huge and substantial speedups. With the Xbox One, the introduction of ESRAM has a similar idea. Memory extensive, expensive draw calls can be rendered into ESRAM. When you don't need so much memory bandwidth, you can use the regular system memory. You have to plan ahead. You have to think of how you're going to use the memory in the most optimal way. So ESRAM gives you an advantage if you do this. For one of our games, we used ESRAM by creating an Excel sheet first. That shows you how we're going to use the ESRAM through the stages of the rendering pipeline. This helped us utilize the speed improvements that were coming from the ESRAM. End quote. So I'm going to do this as most like an article. Originally, the source was from Gaming Bolt, but I'm also going to do this as an article because I want to break down a few of the things he said and provide a few uh, references to a couple of other developers, what they've stated in the past. But here's the thing. I think that the Xbox One's ESRAM isn't going to be so much of a drawback long term as it will be more a pain in the butt to get around. I think that you're going to be able to get around it, but I just don't think it's going to be the most efficient way to do it. It's like, for example, for him, he's going to be using spreadsheets. Now, when we, he was discussing the registrars, uh, registrars um, I don't know if he's also lumping cash in there, but most likely he would probably also do so. Now, cash is obviously a lot slower than, say, the registers, but, and this was also seen from um, when Naughty Dog were discussing accessing the CPU. Um, for example, when you're accessing the cache of CPU cluster 0 from, say, CPU cluster 1, there's a lot of uh, latency involved in that. In fact, it's actually as slow as getting memory uh, getting information from the actual GDDR5 of the PS4. It's that slow. So they need to actually very carefully make sure, okay, well, this CPU is loading from this, you know, correct module. And remember that the Xbox One and PS4 are both relying on the same cache system because both systems are using AMD Jaguars, which are basically eight cores, um, but there are four mo they're basically four cores per each module, so it's got two modules. Each has got its own level 2 cache. Now, the GPU is likely similar. It has um, its own level 2 cache as well, but obviously if you're accessing memory that's too large, or should I say accessing data that's too large to fit in the memory, then what you're going to have to do is, well, basically farm it out to the main system memory, which is obviously where you're starting to have problems. So in these cases, you can indeed stop putting uh, frame buffers, you can start putting uh, certain textures, although it's not necessarily required. The problem that I think we're going to be having with the Xbox One's memory is mostly that it's going to be a lot of strain on the DDR3 to be able to maintain it. Fortunately or unfortunately, however, the PS4 um, and the Xbox One are 
fairly early in their life cycles. And we know that there were going to be numerous improvements made. With the Xbox One, the GPU is also not as powerful as the PS4, which means that it doesn't require so much memory bandwidth to feed it. Right? The faster the GPU, the more memory bandwidth you require. And here's the thing. There is a lot of information regarding the resolution, the whole resolution gate, the scandals, the anger, but... I'll be honest, like, I, for the first time, actually probably sat down and played the Xbox One um, yesterday. I'd kind of messed around with it before, but I just had to play a lot of it yesterday. Uh, a couple of friends have got them, but it's just like most of the time, the multi-platform games that I've played, so I've just kind of messed about with it for a few minutes. Um, but yesterday I was like, you know what, I'm just going to sit down, play a lot of the Watch Dogs, and I did. So... This was part of the whole graphics analysis and frame rate thing that we're doing. So we've got the graphics analysis out. And with Watch Dogs, there's definitely inferior graphics on the Xbox One. It's blatant, right? You can tell it's got lower resolution and everything else. Uh, the shadows are slightly... Uh, sorry, um, it would appear as well that you're getting slightly worse ambient occlusion. And the shadows are slightly worse as well. Although much of that is down to the lower resolution the game's rendering in internally. Now, if you want more information on that, you could look at the Watch Dogs analysis that I did. A lot of information there. I even checked the load times, which, by the way, are slightly slower than the Xbox One. But here's the thing. It didn't really massively affect the gameplay. In fact, it didn't really affect it at all. So, as a gamer, you might have to deal with slightly the lower resolution. But I do feel that neither console's even slightly at its peak here. I do feel that the Xbox One has a tighter learning curve. The only real reason that that's the case is quite simple. Because, well, it is slightly more complicated simply because of the ES RAM. The PS4, on the other hand, has a different learning curve. It's going to have to rely on compute. So basically what I'm saying is that developers are definitely going to have to put a lot of time and research into the PS4's compute potential. Um, it's fairly easy to use, but at the same time, it's going to be a case of, well, they need to make sure that they're not robbing the GPU, um, for example, from graphical capabilities. Also, of course, you've got a DirectX 12, which is coming out, um, and it's going to be very interesting because if it allows lower level access, it could mean that this is going to be very good for the Xbox One as well. Anyway, uh, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Once again, to reiterate, for those of you who are wondering where the uh, Watch Dogs analysis is, I have basically started the frame rate thing um, and recording at the PS4, sorry, PS4, the PC footage. And so it should be up within the next couple of days. I am trying to do a little bit of extra shiners on the side as well. Uh, but my initial thoughts and impressions are frame rate is fairly similar. Interestingly enough, however, the Xbox One's GUI uh, interferes a little bit with frame rates, and I'll go into more into that soon. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.